All right, so what I thought I'd do here is just talk a bit about how I learn songs. Now, this isn't the most efficient way to do it, and I might do a mini-series exploring different ways of how to learn songs more efficiently. But this is just what I generally end up doing, so I'm just going to kind of play it, go through it as I would, and anything of interest, I'll turn to the camera and sort of talk about what I'm doing. So on that note, before we start, I've got myself comfortable, I've got a glass of water and a cup of tea, so I'm settled in for a little while. What I'm doing is I'm going to listen to the song through headphones, because it's much easier to pick out mistakes. You might be playing a like a D over a B minor by mistake if you're just listening to laptop speakers or whatever. It's, it's easy to make mistakes like that, but if you've got the headphones you can pick them up much more quickly. So there's a whole batch I have to learn just now, but I'm just going to pick two or three. I'm probably going to work on one a bit and then jump about between them if I got too bored on one. Um, yeah, so let's just get into it. Out of laziness, I'm going to look at a tab or at least cards for the first one just to get me going and then I'm going to take it from there. So right off the bat I've come into something quite interesting. I know the song is in the key of A. And it starts off with this cool little riff that's more or less outlining a chord, the chord of A. But there are some extra little notes in there I'm not too sure of. So I had to listen to it and it sounds like it's going like this. I don't particularly like playing it in this open position because it feels like there's a lot of potential for slot, particularly if I'm playing it live. So what I tried to do was refinger it up here and I think it went... But that's, again, it's not particularly nice fingering. The other thing that's going on here is this has been played on a 12 string, so immediately I'm thinking about how can I kind of replicate this sound live and what can I do. So something you could do is get another band member to play either the octave below you or the octave above, depending on what you're doing. Or I could use my whammy pedal, so I'd have that set to the octave below if I was playing those ones, and I could play it here, an octave lower, and set my whammy pedal to be the octave above. I've done a video on my whammy pedal really recently, so if you want to check that out, I'll put the card there. So I could play it here. Uh, which I really like, that falls under my fingers well, but doesn't sound as good or as authentic, so I would need to bring the whammy pedal for that. Now, depending on the set, if it's only that song that I'm using it for, and only using it for a couple of seconds, I'd be quite reluctant to bring it because it's quite a big pedal and has its own power supply. If there's other songs on the set I can use it for, I'll be up for bringing it, but otherwise I'll probably try and work out a way around it. So for some reason with this one, I went back to playing in the A, well, this open position, because that was better than the other two, and I found instead of playing the open B, if I moved the note to the fourth fret. So, moving it there, it just really cleans it up for me. I think what it is, is I'm not having to hop over strings as much. Because there I'm having to do kind of three downs together and mute the open string to make sure it doesn't ring out for too long. If I play it here, it makes life much easier for me. Any licks that I'm playing on this I will do in a learn riffs now, so I'll link to that up there just now. But yeah, off the bat that's something pretty interesting. Okay, so I've had a look at the verse now, and basically it's doing an A, which I'm probably going to pick up. Depends what the rest of the band want to do, but that sounds good to me. And it does that, there's vocals, and then it calls back to that riff we did at the very start. Uh, but it misses out a tiny bit, so instead of being... We just go... Then it goes back to the singing with the chords, and then we've got this little, uh, a slightly different full. There's quite a big jump here, because I'm having to play the open B and then go down to the B here. So that's something I will have to watch out for. Now, I could do a chord chart to work out what's going on here, and this is something I'll often do is have a notepad or just an open notepad on the computer, because Word is terrible, notepad is, notepad is much superior, um, and have that go and work out the cards. But I sometimes rely on that far too heavily when I write them out, and uh, it becomes more of a kind of safety blanket. It takes a lot longer for me to internalize the song, so that's why I'm not doing it for this one. I will sometimes, but not in this case. So I've got this uh, pre-chorus, I suppose you call it, worked out. That expression was the expression of a guitarist who's not too sure of the next chord. So the next part here, I've decided to use slightly different inversions to make it a little bit more interesting. I've come up the neck. Or are we? And what I'm doing here is there's an E chord, but I'm playing this E note here on the 5th fret, and also the open E string. And this way it's it's not going to sound like a 12 string, but this slight difference in pitch between the notes is going to sound a bit more uh, sparkly and like a 12 string than the standard open chord. So we've got that, and then it's kind of back to more of the verse. 
A thing I'm noting here is like what happens. So we've got this call and response thing going on and every time it's happening kind of twice. The next part here I've got is the bridge and it's kind of combining different parts of the song already. We've got the uh, bit I had here that I think I just played. Uh, that happens twice. And then it goes back to this A to F sharp minor. Then kind of from out of nowhere we've got this B7. Oops. And the way I'm going to remember this, this is a very convoluted process, but this is just part of how, how I remember songs. Um, but it's in the key of A, and to make a strong cadence to get to A, you'd go from an E7. To get to an E7, you'd go from the B7. So for me in this bridge section, which begins with B as well, so that's probably going on too, um, to get back to the A, I'm thinking, well, we're on this B7, and then from the B7 we go to the E7, and then we build up and we're back into the A. The only part I've got left now is the outro, which is pretty much the same as that bit I've just done. And then it goes back to the little riff we had at the start. So at this point, I've, I've kind of gone through it, I've worked at the parts, I've got a rough idea of the structure, so I'm going to go through it a couple of times. I'm going to make mistakes as I do it, I'm not going to film it because it'll be incredibly boring to watch. But I'm just going to let myself make those mistakes, kind of learn from them and, you know, try and piece the song together. I'll maybe do that two or three times and then I'm going to go on to the next song. So that song was When You Walk in the Room by The Searchers. Next I'm looking at Come Up and See Me. As a side note, I forgot to mention this at the start, but I'm intentionally using this guitar, a guitar with a fixed bridge. Um, if I'm learning a new song, I find it much easier than using something with a Floyd Rose because if there's a slightly different tuning, it's much easier to arrange. And also, if you've got old strings on or your, you know, your trembly needs to be sharpened a little bit, it can make tuning a, a, bit of a, a bit of a nightmare if you're just wanting to learn something quickly. So I've gone through that last one a couple of times, I've got it more or less together. There's a few little things I want to watch out for, so I've made a mental note for them. And we've got another interesting thing in this song as well. I know that we're in the key of C, so I've had a little look at the chords, and it's kind of like a 1-4-5 or variations of that. And this is a Mixolydian sounding riff to begin with. So I know we're in C, so that would mean we've got G Mixolydian. And it's more or less going up the scale. Then this really cool bit of syncopation. What's a bit weird here is the verse starts on the F, which would be our four chord. Uh, the first time round kind of makes sense, it's got eight bars, and the second time round is only seven, so this is something I'm going to have to watch out for. I'll play through it and explain it. And another thing that's throwing me off as well is because I'm starting on the F, that feels a bit more like home, so it feels like it's the start of the bar, but it's the start of the set of four bars, but it's not. I'll play it and hopefully it'll make more sense than me rambling about it. So they got an F, a C, then G. Back to F, C again, then G for three bars. So this last bar, I might do downstrokes and build it up uh, to bring it back. So it feels a bit more intentional when it goes back to the F. So the second time round, we've got an F again, a C, a G, back to the F, then C again, and G for two bars. So this last one, this G, I might actually go for a, a bar chord or a power chord to kind of uh, build it up and get a bit more chug. It depends how the band's doing it. If we're taking the dynamic down and back up there, we'll do that. If we're keeping it straight, I'll just, just play it like that. So after that, we've got the kind of ooh la 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 bit. And at this point, I am starting to think a little bit about backing vocals, what ones I can maybe do and how easy they are to coordinate, because that sometimes takes me a while if it's a weird strumming rhythm compared to what you're having to sing. And this is pretty straightforward, just got an F to C. Which I'd be tempted to do. Then we've got a build up in G again. The chorus is pretty cool. And what I'd probably do here, I don't particularly want to stick on an overdrive to boost the chorus. So I think what I might do is either ride my tone or volume and keep them rolled down a little bit in the verse or pre-chorus, roll them up for the chorus. Or I might just hit the guitar harder. Uh... Yeah, I'll probably do that, just hit them a bit harder. So this whole section, excluding the intro, just repeats again, so this is nice and easy to remember, apart from the weird seven bar thing, which I will have to keep track of. But the song's quite vocal-led, so provided I kind of pay attention to the, the, the singing, that, that should be all right. Then we've got a solo, which is actually, it's a lot more shreddy than I would have thought it would be, but it's on an acoustic guitar, which is quite strange. 
So the way I'm tackling this is the way I've tackled these songs as well, where I'll just kind of go through them, get a gist of it. It'll be a bit sloppy and then I'll refine it. So I'll take a break now, listen to it, and hopefully it'll come together fairly quickly. <laughs> Okay, so I put that on in the background through my earphone to make sure I was doing it more or less right. There's a few mistakes there, but I've kind of got, got the gist of it. There's definitely some weird timing, so you might have noticed when I was starting it, I was counting along, because the solo starts on that offbeat of four, the add of four. So I'm thinking one, two, three, four, add, and that's where it comes in. There's another bit I messed up when it comes after that kind of shreddy bit at the start, and we're going... There's a count there that I've not quite got yet. I think it either comes on three or the end of three. And this is something I'll do when I'm working out songs and solos if I want to try and get them as close to the original as I can. I'll start to make a mental note of what beat things occur on. Because before you've internalized how it sounds, if you have little kind of markers as a roadmap, it can really help you out. Um, I might end up changing this because it, I think I can get a more vocal thing on guitar, like it would be really nice to put up the come up and see me line, what would it be? Or like, you know, uh, make me smile. That's the line I was thinking of. I work some of the vocal melody into the, the solo. I might not end up doing that, so that's why I've just learned the, the solo as it is, which is always a good starting point rather than going off on your own tangent. Okay, so a few other things to mention here. The solo stays in C major, so I know my C major up and in the fretboard, so that makes it much easier in terms of working out where the notes are. And also uh, different fingering options and that kind of thing. There is one note I'm bending from out of key into key. I am going from an E flat to the E, because I just prefer the sound of it than bending from the D. I think it's got, it sounds a bit more like an acoustic as well, because it's harder to bend on those, so maybe a tiny bit more authentic there. And the other thing is that with solos like this, with the kind of quicker bits, I did go into, this is a great thing on YouTube, you probably know about it, but the cog down there, you can change the speed. So you can put it down at 75 and everything slows down a bit. This is also a really good way of, of learning a solo. So I did that as well before trying to play this at full speed. I'd play it at 75% and I'll, I'll be doing a bit more of that as well as my, my learning process continues. The only final things I'm going to say here is there's a few like dead stops in the song, but I, I more or less know where they are because it's, it's a fairly well-known song. And at the end, what it does is it's just going between the chorus and the kind of ooh-la-la-la bit, just alternating between them. So I've more or less got the structure of that one down. Um, I'll run through it a couple of times like I did with the last one. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the first one. Obviously, I won't film this because this will be incredibly boring, but just to give you an idea of the process here, I'll play that maybe two or three times. I'll play this one two or three times, and then I'm going to go on to the next song. So I will see you there. <laughs> 